morning guys. I thought I would talk this morning about having a lower than normal subcooling. We talked about what subcooling was. So what would it mean to have a lower than normal subcooling? There are a few things that can cause this. Uh, the number one in that category is low charge. The lower the charge, the less opportunity the refrigerant has to condense in the condenser. Therefore, the less opportunity that liquid refrigerant has to cool. So, in turn, you'll have lower subcooling. There are a few other things that can cause this too. Failed metering devices or the wrong metering device. If you have an oversized piston, let's say you had a three ton unit and for some reason it had someone put an 84 piston in it, something that was too large, maybe a four or five ton piston, your head pressure would be lower and your subcooling would be lower because you don't have that restriction there you need to keep your head pressure up and maintain the proper subcooling. Same thing with a TXV, they can fail where they're letting too much refrigerant through, cause the same issue. It's like having an oversized piston because it's letting through more refrigerant than it should. Any of those conditions will cause low subcooling. And remember, not just the failure in the TXV, the wrong TXV. So you can double check those aftermarket TXVs like Goodman use and a lot of other people use. You can check and make sure they use the proper TXV because you never know. And those are a couple causes you can have for low subcool. A good question might be that if your coil is plugged or if there's an issue with the outdoor fan motor, will that mean your subcooling will drop as well? And I don't think, I don't think, no, not necessarily. If your fan motor is not operational, the unit's probably not going to run very long before it trips out on head pressure anyway. But having a blocked coil, your, your head pressure will skyrocket due to the fact that you can't get any heat transfer across that coil because no air is moving across it. But that doesn't mean that subcooling is going to be lower because the refrigerant condensing temperature goes up along with the head pressure. So you're no longer condensing at 95, 100 degrees. You might be condensing at 130 or 140 degrees, meaning just a delta T between the condensing temperature and the outdoor air might be enough to give you a little bit of subcooling. So it's real hard to say that you'll lose all your subcooling if you have a blocked coil. I don't think that's necessarily true. And typically, if you have a situation where your refrigerant head pressure is that high, you, you're going to have other issues anyway, and subcooling will be the least of your problems. So.